Hey there, welcome back again here to the Ivory Tower Collections. I've got a real short video here for you guys today. It had uh, become apparent to me in watching my previous video on my GoTech installation when I went through the software process that uh, perhaps I could have made it a bit more clear. And uh, since that time, I've actually discovered that there's really only one program I need that will both format my USB flash drives in the way that I need them to into the various floppy drive partitions as well as being able to be used as a file explorer to be able to view those partitions and to be able to copy files back and forth. And third is I can also use the same program to also write disk image files, in this case floppy disk image files, to multiple floppy partitions at once. So I figured I would make this quick short video to show you the process I go through. For starters, I had mentioned this program before, the USB Floppy Manager version 140i. Where to get this program these days is going to be a bit trickier because the original link in my video apparently is no longer valid and I haven't had much luck in locating a new version or a better link that I can provide. But in the meantime, if you should be able to find this software, this is the one that I would recommend to use. So it's a single executable that handles everything. So I'm going to show you how it works right now. For starters, I'm just going to go ahead and open up this program. Once the software loads up, you'll be presented with this screen here. Now there's not much to see or do yet because it's waiting for you to plug in your flash drive. So I'm going to plug in a brand new empty flash drive now. Once you've done that, your computer should detect it and the software should see it automatically and will assign whatever drive letter it designates. Now notice that we just see something here, it just says it sees that a generic USB device, but there's nothing else we can do with it yet. That's because we have to format it. So to do that, go up here where to where it says USB flash drive and select the format option. On the screen, you have a number of different floppy formats that you can use from 1.44 meg, 1.2 meg, and 720K. For the purposes of this video, and because of the GoTech drives that I use in my Roland modules, I have to choose the 1.44 meg option. Additionally, the number of floppy disks. Now this is basically how many partitions do we want to create. By default, it'll usually be set to 100, and that's fine, because really you don't need more than 100, honestly. But you can type in numbers if you want something specific, or use a drop-down and select specific numbers of partitions that you wish to use. From here, I'm going to go ahead and click the Begin Format button. You'll get the usual alert messages and confirmation windows that you'll need to click through. And at this point, it will begin to format the thumb drive or the USB flash drive with various 1.4 meg floppy drive partition images. And it's done. Simply click OK to the Format Complete message and close out of the Format tool. At this point, it will now reread your flash drive and you will now see that you have a number of partitions, in this case 100 virtual floppy drive partitions from 000 all the way to 099. So you have 100. Now, at this point, you can actually start to copy files over if you want, but because I'm doing this specifically for my Roland module, I want to show you an additional step I do at this point. Now, although these virtual floppy drive images exist, and although they are indeed IBM compatible images, the actual Roland module itself can't quite read anything on the diskettes or use them in their current form. Instead, the Roland would normally require to have to format the floppy disk through the Roland module itself for the specific formatting structure that the Roland needs. As it turns out, the format partition or the file type that the Roland modules use is actually still IBM compatible and can be read in IBM computers, which is good because it makes it easy to copy files through the Roland module and be able to read them again back on your computer. But to make this process quicker and easier, there's two ways that you can do this. There's the difficult way and there's the quick way. The difficult way would be to actually take my flash drive, plug it into my GoTech device while it's in my Roland module, and actually use the built-in modules formatting utility, specifying each partition one at a time as it does that. But that would take a very long time, especially for 100 disk images. So here's the easy way. What I did was, is I did use the Roland modules internal format utility to just format just one of my partitions. From there, 
actually exported that partition as an image file to save it locally to my computer. I did this because once you have that floppy drive blank image that's compatible with your module saved, then you can quickly write that image to all the other partitions, essentially formatting them quickly specifically for your module so that each diskette will look like a brand new freshly formatted disk to your sound module. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do Control A on my keyboard to highlight all of the partitions at once. I'm then going to right click and choose a bulk write image file option. From here, I'm going to choose my blank floppy drive image that I'm going to use and click open. Now at this point, it's actually writing each of the blank disks to each of these partitions. You'll notice that it's currently on number 20, it's in the 20s here, and it shows that it has about 70 some odd left to do. So I'm just going to let it complete this process. And it's done. It has now written my pre-formatted image for my Roland module to each of these floppy drive image partitions. So now what do I want to do? Well, now let's actually copy some actual data files to one of these floppy drive partitions. So let's just go ahead and let's just pick something fairly easy to view. I'm just going to click on number one here. You could start with 000. That is a legitimate floppy drive image partition but I'll just choose 001. Now, if you double click one of these partitions, it will in fact open up your normal Windows file viewer or file explorer window. And it will also show you that you are looking at that particular floppy drive partition. See, it says floppy 001. Now, before you can copy any files to any of these partitions, the first thing you need to do, especially if you're using a newer operating system like I am with Windows 10, is you're gonna to need to delete the system volume information folder that always gets written to removable devices. So simply highlight it and delete it. That's because it's going to cause problems when you try to copy files and save them to the actual partition, to the virtual floppy drive partition itself. You see, right now, although it says floppy 001, anything that we do or copy into this doesn't actually exist on that floppy image yet until we save it to it later. I'll show you what I mean. For now, let's try getting some files copied over. I have here a sample folder with some MIDI files. I'm just gonna select this top one right here. I'm just gonna highlight it, right click, click on copy. Then I'm gonna go back to the image for my floppy drive here, and I'm going to paste it, just like that. Now, although it shows the file is copied here, to this floppy drive image, it's not actually written to it yet. To do that, we have to go back to the GoTeX software, like you see here, and we then have to right click on the partition that we're using and click the save option. When we do that, you'll see that it now shows that 4% of that partition has been used. That's right, the software doesn't tell you how much space you have left, it only tells you how much space you have used. Additionally, you'll notice that the image partitions only show to be 1.39 megabytes in size. Well, that's just Windows giving you its estimate file, or estimate capacity size. That can cause you problems because files that might be just over 1.4 megabytes in size will not copy over to these partitions because of the fact that Windows doesn't think they will fit. So that's one of the disadvantages to the newer software. It's not that you don't actually have 1.44 megabytes of space. You do, but Windows doesn't think you do. So it doesn't let it copy over. It's kind of a bummer, but still, for the convenience of having so many floppy drives on a single USB drive, it's very handy. So, no problems, right? Easy enough, I just copied it over, and now this floppy drive 001 image contains that MIDI file. If I were to double click this again, Windows will again pull up the file explorer and it will show the file there. So let's copy over another file, right? Okay. I have the image still opened up right here. 
So let me go back to my sample MIDI files and let's choose something like, uh, here we go, here's, uh, here's Sonic the Hedgehog 2, the Mystic Cave Zone. I'm going to right click, copy, go back to my floppy drive partition within the Windows File Explorer and I'm going to paste it. And here we are. Cool. What do we do from here? We go to the GoTek software, we right click on the partition, and we click Save. Uh-oh. An error message. System cannot find the file specified. What? Well, I did this on purpose because I want to show you something. For a long time, well, I wouldn't say a long time, but for longer than I'm willing to admit, embarrassingly, I fought this issue time and time again until I began to discover that some files would copy over and not give me the error, and some would. Let's see if you can find, figure it out the way I did. So let's take another look at the files in the partition that are trying to be written and waiting to be saved. Let's take a good look at these files for a second. I'll wait a few seconds and let you think about it. Have you figured it out? Well, here's the deal. The biggest difference between these files isn't the fact that they're MIDI files, and it's not even the fact that we have case sensitivity, because you'll notice that this file's all uppercase and this one's got upper and lowercase. No, that's not the problem. The problem is the names. Yeah. You see, back in the old days, old DOS diskettes and old operating systems did not support long file names. And in fact, we were limited to a format that was specifically called the 8.3 format, or more specifically, the 8.3 naming convention format. And what that 8.3 meant was that the first 8 in the 8.3 was the number maximum number of characters that your actual main file name itself could be. The dot .3 was indicating the decimal and the three for the extension. So in this case, DOS files couldn't be any larger than eight characters in their file name, and the extension couldn't be any larger than three characters. So what we need to do here is we need to reduce the size of this name. We simply need to truncate it. We just need to come up with something shorter. So how about if I just call it Mystic? That's good enough. Maybe I'll put an S2 in front of it. Let's see. Is it small enough? Let's count the characters. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oops, I have nine. That still won't work. So I'll have to shrink it even further. Again, it has to be no more than eight characters in the front with the three character extension. So we'll count again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Good. Let's confirm it. And again, I'm actually renaming this directly in the floppy image of the Windows File Explorer. So now if I go to the GoTek software and I right click and save, it works. And now we show 6% of the file has been used. So just to show you that that wasn't some trick, I'm going to do this again. This time, let's choose this file here, this outrun-magical. I'm going to right click, copy, go back to the floppy image paste it. There it is. If I go ahead and try to save it, it's going to give me an error message specifically on the outrun file. Again, the outrun file's name is too long. I need to shorten the name. So we'll just call it uh, outrun. I guess that's good enough. I'll just, I'll just leave it as outrun for now. So now we're only using up one, two, three, four, five, six characters. Should fit fine and it should work fine. And now if I right click and save, it takes it and we have no issues. Now it shows 15% used on that floppy, in, or floppy partition image. And that's it. That's how you use the GoTech software. That's how, or that's how you use this batch management tool software rather to, uh, for your GoTech. That's how easy it is on a Windows system to copy files from wherever and save them into these floppy partition images. And again, this is just one partition I'm working with, and I've only used up 15% of the space with a couple of MIDI files. I've got 99 more I can utilize. So you can see that a single drive or a single flash drive with even 100 partitions is going to 
give you quite a bit of space to store data on. So hopefully you guys found this video helpful. Again, I had I had had some questions uh, presented to me to that you know perhaps I hadn't made it very clear in my initial video. So I thought I'd create a separate one just on this process itself. So once again, thanks for hanging out with me today here at the Ivory Tower Collections, and I'll catch you guys next time.